Sean and Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in creating these nightfall beaded bead earrings with a fun tassel of fringe at the bottom. Remember, if you need any materials, you can check out the links below to shop with us online. Gather everything up and let's get started. So to get started on our nightfall earrings, you are going to need four, and this is for each earring, you're gonna need four super duos, 17 four millimeter bicones. I'm using the metallic blue iris along with the Crystal Lab full super duos. I have two millimeter bicones in that same color, 11 OC beads in the Duraco galvanized gold, and 15 OC beads in that metallic blue iris. I have 0 .006 white wildfire beading thread on a size 11 needle and about three and a half feet of thread to four feet of thread. I have a stop bead on the base of the thread and I've left about two and a half inches at the base of that below that stop bead in order to tie off my thread ends together as we get to the top. I also have a wire guard for the top and then an ear wire to attach to that. To begin, we're gonna begin, and this is all based on tubular peyote stitch. So if you don't know peyote stitch, you may want to take a look at that first. I'm gonna go on and put on my thread and needle a total of eight of my 11 OC beads in that gold color. Rounding that out, I'm gonna take my thread and needle back through the first six beads. From here, I'm going to progress to two 15 OC beads that are going to go in between every other gold bead. So we're doing peyote stitch here. I'm adding two 15 O's to my thread and needle. I'm going to skip over the next gold bead and go through what I'm going to call bead number three, coming out of bead number one. Coming out of bead number three, add two more gold beads. Skip over bead number four and go into bead number five. Again, add two more 15s, skip over six, sew into seven. And then to add the final rotation, two more 15s, you're skipping over number eight and you're going back in to bead number one. As you go back into bead number one, then that finishes what is now our third row of our tubular peyote stitch. Now to fix this and get it to start to be that tubular shape, we need to step up. We're gonna step up by going into the first beads that we added in our last row of our peyote stitch, which are the two 15 ohms. Taking my thread and needle now, I'm gonna go through those first two 15s. I'm now going to catch on and add beads between each of my two sets of my 15 OC beads. I'm going to increase in size, adding two of my 11 OC beads, and then sewing through the next two 15s. Because I'm doing this four beads at a time, basically, for the peyote stitch, I'm going to repeat this four times, adding a total of eight beads. Two beads go on, and then you're going to sew through your next two 15s. Give a nice tight pull and that'll start to get our dome shape for our earring base here. Again, two more. So into the next two 15s. That's six. I have two more to add. So we're adding four groups of two. And then I'm going to sew into those first two 15s that my thread was coming out of. That is my fourth row of my tubular peyote stitch. From here, I'm going to step up. To step up and to get to my fifth row of my peyote stitch, I'm gonna go through my first two seed beads from the row I just completed. Now between each of our two seed beads, we're gonna grab our two millimeter bicones. So we're gonna add a two millimeter bicone and then we're gonna sew through the next two gold 11s. Pull that thread through. And you can see I'm kind of doming it and cupping it in my hand to start to get the shape of the beaded bead. Going in here then again, two millimeter on through my two gold beads. 
continuing this a total of four times because every time I'm doing something, I'm doing it four times. Going through then the first two 11 OC beads that your thread was originally coming out of before adding the bicone, give a nice tight pull on the thread. You want to pull the thread rather than the needle because you don't want to uh, hurt at all the thread that is currently inside the eye of the needle. We're going to once again step up. To step up, we're going through the first bead that we added in the last row through the crystal. Now we're going to grab our super duo beads. Our super duo beads, you want to make sure that both holes are open. You're going to grab a super duo and sew through a crystal. Again, repeating this a total of four times. As you do this, just make sure that you don't have your thread twisted at all. And after each super duo, again, give a little tight pull. They're going to naturally want to go in and form and fall toward the center. Don't worry about that too much. I'm going to go through my two millimeter bicone that my thread was originally coming out of as well as back through that first hole of the first super duo that I added. From here, we are going to add two gold 11 O's. However, in order to make it sit in the middle of the super duo and not toward the bottom or the top at all, I want to also add one 15 O seed bead currently to my needle. So I'm coming out my super duo, two 11s, one 15. I'm going to go into the far side of the two millimeter bicone that's going to sit directly below these two beads that I'm adding. And so from again, the far side toward me, towards the thread that I'm coming out of, add one more 15 and then sew back through my two 11s that I just added. Give a nice tight pull and then sew through the next super duo again through that first hole. Now that we have that done once, we're going to repeat it three more times. Two 11s on, one 15 on. Go to the far end of the crystal that sits below. Sew through, almost backtracking. Add one more 15 and back through the two 11s. The 15s are added just for a tiny bit of added look as well as really hiding and disguising the thread through the next super duo and repeat the next set again. Time number three, adding two 11s, one 15, sewing back through that two millimeter bead that sits below. One more 15 gets added and back through the 11s. If you discard the 15s here, that's perfectly fine. You'll just see a little bit more of your thread. Sew through the next super duo. And then I'm coming out the last space, get that thread end out of the way, coming out the last open space between those super duos. Again, two 11s, 115 through the super duo, or through the crystal rather. One more 15 and back through the two 11s. As you go back through the two 11s then and give the thread a nice tight yank, you're going to also sew through the first hole of that next super duo. Now we're going to step up. To step up, I'm going to reverse the thread from the super duo going through that first hole into the second hole of that super duo. We're going to do everything now that we've been doing in reverse. So now I need to add a crystal. And after the crystal, I'm going to add a 15 out. I'm going to go through the two gold seed beads there. Add one more 15 out and back through the crystal. Give a nice tight pull and that sits that set right in between that super duo. Through the next super duo and repeat. So coming out the super duo, again one crystal, one 15. This time I'm coming to the side that's closest to me and sewing away from me through that 11 out. Add another 15. Sew through the crystal that's already there. Give a nice tight pull so I don't see a lot of extra thread and sew through the next super duo. Two times are done. 
onto the third. Crystal, 15, through the 11s, out the 11s, out of 15, and back through that crystal that your thread just added. When you go back through the crystal, make sure you're not going through the 15 at all. And sometimes I'll skip through, like I just did to show you, through the Super Duo if I can right away. When you do that, you just want to make sure, again, there's not a lot of extra thread showing. I have one more to add, adding a crystal, a 15, through those two 11 OC feeds, one more 15 on, and through the crystal. So you're actually square stitching those beads in place in the center of the Super Duo. That is the base for this tubular beaded bead. Now we're going to decrease. We increase to get there. Now we're going to decrease coming off the end after we've added that second set of our crystals. So to decrease now, I want to once again step up. I'm going to step up through the crystal that I just added. Don't worry about the 15s. In between the crystals, just like we did prior, we're going to add two of our 11 OC beads. Sew through the next crystal in line and continue again four times. Going through and doing this tubular peyote. As you go through, adding the 11 OC beads, they're going to sit and cap right above the Super Duo beads. Once you get the last two gold beads on, you're going to go through the two millimeter crystal that your thread was coming out of. And then if you can, you can step up right away by going through the first two gold beads in this row. From here, we're going to add two 15s between each of our golds. Two 15s get added, sew through the next group of two gold beads. Again, four times. Keep in mind also, you can comment below if you've done any changes to the pattern, repeated it as a bracelet, and made multiple beaded beads. Also, I know that I'm doing this in just a couple of takes and rather quickly. You can always go into your settings on YouTube if you're on the desktop. It's right there, basically where I am here, that little wheel looking option, and slow me down. From here, you're coming out your last, or your first two 11 OC beads, again, stepping up through the first two beads of the row you just completed. From here, we're gonna go down now to one bead. One 11 O gets put on, and you go through the next two 15s. One 11 O goes on through your next two 15s. I'm going to repeat this then with just the gold added. After you go through your last two 15s here, you're going to want to step up through that first gold that we just added in a singular row. We're going to do one more row of our peyote stitch just with one gold bead. Gold bead goes on and you sew into the next gold that's there. Again, tubular peyote. Once you have your final four beads on for your last row, you're going to pull that thread tight, and now we're going to start this fun fringe that hangs down. Keep in mind that if you would like to, you can continue with this beaded bead added as a bracelet. You can either close this off by adding another row of peyote stitch with 15 OC beads or repeat a couple rows of just gold beads and then start the progression of making it larger over. So to our beaded bead at the bottom, rather than kind of just closing it up, we're going to have some fun and add a bunch of fringe. We're going to be adding fringe to each of our eight beads that sit at the end here of our peyote stitch as well as between those eight beads. So we're gonna end up with 16 little uh, tassels, basically. Coming out of one of those eight gold beads that your thread is currently out of, you're gonna pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight 15 OC beads, followed by one of your four millimeter bead. And if you wanna keep it a little bit smaller, you can all, use all twos, followed by one gold 11 O. Push that up next to your beaded bead. Reverse your thread 
through the seed bead, or through the crystal rather, not through the seed bead, and through all of the eight 15 O's that sit there. When you pull that nice and tight then, you shouldn't have a ton of extra thread showing. If you have a little bit of extra thread showing there at the top, pull that bottom 11 -0 free a little bit and then give a tight tug. From here, when I add my progression of my eight seed bead drops, I'm gonna go back through the bead that my thread is coming out of. What that's going to do is hang that drop or that tassel right below that 11 -0 seed bead. Coming out that 11 -0 seed bead, before I go into the next gold bead in line, I'm going to repeat this same process, but I'm gonna add 12 beads. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, just to make it a little bit longer. Add one more of your four millimeter bead, as well as your gold 11 -0 to hold your beads in place. So back through that four millimeter bicone, as well as up through all 10 or all 12 of those 15 O's. If you happen to miss one, it'll stick out to the side a little bit. So you wanna make sure that your thread and needle are going through all of them. Again, I don't wanna see a lot of extra thread. I'll kind of push the beads up and give a little pull then from the bottom. From here, I wanna sew into the next gold bead in line. So I'm gonna sew into the next gold bead in line. There'll be eight beads total that you're sewing into. The groups of 12 are going to be between the beads. The groups of eight circle around the bead. So the next group of eight that I do, the thread and needle after I add it on, I'll sew back through that same bead. Then when exiting that same bead before progressing to the next one, I'll do a line of 12, so forth and so on. So it's going to continue the whole way around the piece adding in these little pieces of fringe. If I separate them out, you can actually see how they're added there in the base. You could even drop another bead down below, but they'll hang really fun, all centered around the bottom of this beaded bead. As you're finishing up your fringe here, I'm coming out of my last row of fringe, which is one of my rows of 12 there, and I'm gonna go through the first bead that my thread was originally coming out of when I did my first little fringe section. That's gonna be our finishing line in all of this different fringe. From there, once I go through that bead and come on out, I'm just gonna take my fingers quick and push my fringe all down toward the center. From here, we're gonna backtrack through the design. You can see how fun those are gonna look on the ears. And I'm going to backtrack through the design to get back up to the top. To do so, we're going to do the peyote stitch in reverse. Coming out of those first gold bead, I'm gonna go through the two 15s, then I'm going to go through the two 11s that are right after it, then through the crystal that's right after that. So you're literally just reversing it through the next super duo. And because I'm center between the two, I'm gonna keep going through the gold bead there and step up through the second hole of my super duo that sits above through the next crystal so basically everything on an angle and you can see I'm just rotating around the project to get to the top now I'm at the other side going through the two gold 11s to the two through the two 15s through the single gold and through the next single gold when I come out the next single gold bead there I'm at the top now of that grouping of eight, just like we put all the fringe at the bottom of that group of eight. We're now going to, coming out of that group of eight here, attach one more four millimeter bead and our wire guard. To do so, just kind of move that stop bead out of the way. You're gonna take your four millimeter bead coming out of one of your 11 OC beads, add on a wire guard or a wire protector up through the side over the loop, down the other side. Now before I get too far, I'm gonna go in and just do a little pinch. So that way my wire guard is a little bit more touching at the top. I do this a lot with earrings. Pull that down toward the bead. Go back through that four millimeter bicone. And when you come out that four millimeter bicone, in order to center it on the piece, you're gonna look across the piece 
Count over one, two, three, and to the fourth bead there, which sits directly across from it. Go through that fourth bead. Coming out that fourth bead, reinforce, going back up through the bicone, back up through the wire guard, down through the wire guard on the other side. And then when you come out the other side here, you want to make sure as you exit your crystal that you're going to go back into that first 11-0 seed bead, making sure also that the thread stays in that little groove of the wire guard. See that first 11-0 seed bead right there that your thread was coming out of? You're going to go into the opposite side of that same 11-0, giving a nice tight pull. That positions that four millimeter bicone directly on top of our beaded bead. From here, I'm going to sew over two gold 11s and then take off my stop bead. When I take off my stop bead, all I need to do is tie my two thread ends together. I'm going to tie those two thread ends together, take my thread burner or thread zap, scissors if you have them, if you want to glue, that's up to you. I'm just going to do two knots there. The needle and thread that's still connected, I'm going to sew into the next 11 OC bead, pulling that knot toward that piece through the next two 15s, just to separate my thread ends. So that way when I'm going through and I have my thread with my thread burner, my thread edges do not end in the same place. So it just creates less of a thread eyesore. Burn this guy down and that one flush against the piece. Last thing to do then is just to go in, open up my lever back or my ear wire and attach my earrings so I can happily wear my fun midnight blue earrings. Thanks so much for joining me in these great fun nightfall earrings. Remember, if you want to make these midnight blue nightfall earrings, you can check the links below to shop with us online. You just need a couple super duos, which you probably already have in your stash, and maybe some two and four millimeter bicones. Remember, you can change this up. You can make it into a bracelet. You can take the beaded bead idea and really go to town, making them in different colors, different sizes even, by adding some extra bead sizes to it. Remember also to comment below as well as give a little thumbs up. That way it helps to build this amazing beading community. When you comment, make sure to say any alterations that you made, ask any questions, as well as give advice to other beaders that may be starting on the project. As always, you can post your pictures of your nightfall earrings in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. If you need any materials again, check out those links to shop with us online. Also, if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit that little button so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads and subscribe to this YouTube channel. As always, thanks so much for watching. Happy beading and enjoy your new glitzy and sparkly nightfall earrings.